Paranormal Skeptics, which famous case do you think is most likely to be legit? It's not a famous case but I'm a skeptic who has seen a UFO. I have absolutely no clue what it was, but there were a lot of us who watched a green light move very quickly around the sky before shooting off into space. This was around 15 years ago and very close to an army base, so I've always just chalked it up to something they were doing. But whatever it was, I understand why people who see this sort of thing think it's a legit UFO. I've racked my brains for answers of what that could have been for years without understanding how that could have worked. Too many people across the world dating back centuries have seen creatures that could be described as yetis or sasquatch for there not to be some kernel of truth to it. I don't think they exist anymore, but I'm willing to bet at some point they did. Deep unexplored cave systems span both North and South America, and correlate to both cryptid sightings and human disappearances. Frankly, I think it's narrow-minded to assume small populations of humanoid cryptids could not have lived largely undetected in these systems for centuries. Skeptics often toss out the denial but no remains are ever found. How often are bare remains found? Elephants and other animals of higher intelligence hide themselves to die. Prints, fragments, and signs of activity have been found, but just like any other strange phenomena they are easily dismissed by skeptics. The first dinosaur fossils were discovered in the 1800s. That means US founders had zero awareness of this planet's earlier inhabitants. I find that fact fascinating. It's a great quote by K. The movie Men in Black, 1,500 years ago, everybody knew that the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew that the Earth was flat. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that humans were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. It's human arrogance to assume we have full awareness of the universe we live in. Twice in my life I've seen what looked like animal skeletons in skin-tight latex or something running by. The first time I saw it running across a field. It looked like what you'd imagine a wolf-like skeleton with like a vacuum-sealed latex skin over it, basically the most extreme possible definition of skin and bones. Then years later I saw a skin and bones deer-like creature dart across the road while driving. These were way too skinny to be living animals and I brushed off the first sighting as a kid to my imagination until it happened again as an adult with a different looking animal. These were both solid black and too skinny to be real animals misidentified. Jotlov Pass never really received an adequate explanation. Each proposed idea has glaring holes or requires the reader to assume experienced climbers to make completely irrational decisions even before hypothermia set in. Second, there was an incident in Iran where F-14s were scrambled to intercept something. Ground radar had it, the Tomcats with advanced radar had it, and one pilot got a visual before it seemed to defy physics and run away. Most credible UFO report I've heard due to multiple witnesses and tracking it on both ground and air radar. Missing 411. At any given time, it's believed that an estimated 12-plus serial killers are operating in the U.S., IIRC. Large state and national parks are wild, difficult to navigate areas that are sparsely and transiently populated. If a smart serial killer were looking for an environment to find and dispose of victims, parks are a haven. In fact, I have a theory that some of the evidence and sightings of cryptids like Bigfoot are actually people who want to live secluded in deep woods, either for solitude, or to have the freedom to hunt people per their serial killer predilections. Additionally, bears, wolves, and cougars slash mountain lions exist. Missing 411 seems less paranormal and more bad shit happens to me. Sasquatch seems to be the most realistic to me considering creatures that match their description used to walk the earth. I'm also not entirely unwilling to admit that Megalodon or Plesiosaur could still be alive either. Maybe something like Mothman, or other various earth-based creatures could exist, but so far there's no traces besides a couple of witnesses here and there. Aliens could also be real, however I don't expect much information to come from that front in my lifetime. Ghosts are off the table for me though, until something more concrete happens, I'm going to remain skeptical. Same thing with demons. Anything involving the ocean. Giant squids used to be an old sailor's tale but we found them to be real semi-recently. Deep sea gigantism is real, meaning huge creatures live at incredible depths that we are unable to explore. Sperm whales hunt giant squid at depths that are nearly unexplorable to humans. Could this mean a megalodon is possible? Sure. But it could also mean we have unimaginable, almost alien creatures living on our planet. Forget from another planet, 
we might live with some of the most inconceivable creatures on our very own Earth. The idea that we're in a computer simulation. It is, of course, not provable. But there's some weird shit about reality going on there are an infinite amount of real numbers between 0 and 1. Yet the integers show up in the equations for sound dissipation over distance, gravitational attraction, motion, the conversion of mass to energy, and a bunch of other things. Why can the laws that govern the universe be reduced to very simple equations that have integers? Why doesn't E equals MC1.99999 or E equals MC2.0001? It's almost like someone programmed reality this way. We can make simulations. Plural. We can make lots and lots of copies. We can run them all and see what the most likely outcome of a given simulation will be. Given enough computer power we could make an infinite number of simulations of the universe. With that in mind, the odds of being in the real universe instead of a simulation of it become vanishingly small. We live in a four-dimensional universe, one with length, width, depth, and time. But why stop at four? In the same way that a painting is a two-dimensional rendering of a three-dimensional object, our universe could be a simplified, four-dimensional rendering of some higher dimensional reality. These questions imply the existence of a programmer, a being whose purposes are beyond our comprehension. I am an atheist and a skeptic, and if I have to choose between a natural explanation and a supernatural one I will always choose the natural one. But I admit the concept of simulation programmer is very similar to a theist's concept of God programmer. I'm a scientist. Mostly atheist. I believe there could be things outside our understanding with scientific explanations. But that doesn't make it not creepy. I don't believe any famous cases because I know people like to make shit up and I can't verify their truthfulness. I believe only a few people that I know. My mom and her cousin saw a UFO on the farm in western Oklahoma when they were about 13, 70s. It was a great big light that came down and hovered over the barn, then took off almost faster than they could see. It scared them shitless. And to this day, they're both spooked by it and tell the exact same story despite not seeing each other for many years at a time. My sister saw a ghost when she was a kid. My sister is so freaking serious and has no reason to ever lie to me. She also refuses to ever talk about it now. I believe she saw something. I have no idea if it was a child's random figment of imagination, she had run back upstairs in the neighbor's house in the middle of the day to grab her coat as they all left so she wasn't exactly prepared for a fright or a break in the space-time continuum. She saw a Native American man in the corner, but like, it was bright daylight shining in that corner. The U.S. Navy sightings of 2004. Videos were just declassified by the Pentagon a few weeks ago, just Google U.S. Navy UFO for pages and pages on the incident. In releasing the videos, the U.S. Navy officially acknowledges that its pilots encountered so-called unidentified aerial phenomena. As I got close to it, it rapidly accelerated to the south, and disappeared in less than two seconds, said retired U.S. Navy pilot David Fravor. This was extremely abrupt, like a ping-pong ball, bouncing off a wall. It would hit and go the other way. The Jersey Devil. Not that as was an evil entity that roams the Pine Barrens but was a deformed child with a vestigial tail. The deformities were a product of being from a lineage with heavy inbreeding. The members of their family would venture out to kidnap people to bring in new genetic material. If you want spooky then assume it was from a family of cannibals that gained supernatural powers from eating humans. For ghosts if there ever was place that is haunted it would be Fence Point National Cemetery. It is the resting place of one thousands of confederate pals in a common grave and 135 Union soldiers that were guards of area forts. If that's not enough in 1997 the caretaker was murdered in his home near the cemetery. That's a lot of tormented souls in one spot. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.